Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Chrissy Swan, Sam Pay and Jonathan Brown. This is Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Oh. What are you doing, Jackie? You, you stuff her with the machine, brother? I think you turned the desk on. Yeah, you, you turned it on, you silly boy. This Ap- is funny. Jack. I love it. Apologise to our greater <laughs> audience. No, it, show, it was showing Jack. me that it was, on, that it was on air. You can't apologise. Jack, you're I, I apologise. So <laughs> I apologise. Are we on air now? Do we know we're yeah, on air? We are on air. Yeah. Yeah. We were just punked. Yeah. We were punked, Yeah, man. we were punked. Hey, I'm uh, going to know. How did you go yesterday with uh, Dino? Oh, to me and young, Kitty. Uh, Kitty boy. Um, so I'm making a my cartoon. My 10-year-old we're and, talking about. And Kit, the middle kid, yeah. my boy, yeah. he's in the cartoon, John, and his character's called Kit, right? Yes. Anyway, I picked him up for a professional session. It's his favourite thing to do. Or he had to come in and voice a bunch of stuff. And then I'm like, hey, I'm trying to push him to go to a restaurant after. Mm. I'm like, hey, man, I've got, I've got, I'm an adult. I've got money. We can do mm. anything. And I said he'll definitely choose Sha Long Bao, Soup Dumplings. It's his favourite. You know, rest, sit down. Go to Kitty. What do you want, man? He's like, oh, I just want to go drive through. Yeah. <laughs> so we ate Maccas in the car. I've forgotten Maccas was an option. Right, Maccas fun. is always the winner. That's fine. It, it was good. Uh, where, where else is the kid going to say? Oh, oh, you know, absolutely. Maccas is given the option. Forget how good it is. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Book smarter these holidays. With whatif.com, you can book everything for your trip all in one place. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. Make up for missed holidays with what if. It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling. I always feel so fortunate to have this microphone in front of me because I feel like the listeners of Nova 100, of Chrissy, Sam and Brownie, are like my friends. And if I have a problem or a question, I can put it out here with a phone number after it, 13 20 4, 10. Would you lend them money? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, absolutely, big. I would. Speak. <laughs> but I can put a question out there and I always get an answer from, uh, fr- from, from you listening right now. And I've got one for you, 13, mm. 20, 4, 10. Can you explain to me mm. how pawn shops work? P-A-W-N. Mm. Oh. Now, I yeah, am... Oh, that's, it, it's a fascinating question, Tony, because... I don't Thank you, Brownie. In, I don't think I've been in one apart from... Is cash converters classed as a pawn shop? I think so, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah. it is. I've been in cash converters. So if you are an expert on porn, P-A-W-N... Yeah. Dino, stay out of this conversation. All right, John. Well, d- okay. D- I know. Dino's got his credit card out for some reason. You're not what? subscribing to any services. It's, it's normal to watch... <sighs> it is normal. Yeah. It is normal. Dino's got to the end of it all. So hey, yeah. Uh, big finish, trust me. <laughs> P-A-W-N we're talking. These are the shops that you see that have got all sorts of bits and bobs in there. Mm -hmm. I was on my walk the other day and I walked past a pawn shop, Mm P-A-W-N, and I I love rings, right? Mm. And I was specifically looking for an irregular pearl ring. What does that mean? Like a a, a ring with a pearl on it that's irregular, not the perfect round one, the ones that are... I Mm -hmm. think there's a difference between freshwater and... Salt water or Dino's something like that. getting confused when he heard the word pearl. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I know. Ring. Ring. Specifically ring in terms of jewellery. <laughs> and it goes on the... Finger. Finger. Yes. <laughs> the pearl's on the finger. Mate, yeah. his eyes are just spinning. Yeah. So anyway, there. I was walking past and in the window I saw an irregular pearl ring. That's set, cool. Set in silver. And I thought I'm going to try that on. So I went in and it fit. Oh, man. And I went, I'm going to have that. It was $19. Do you have to barter? No, $19. And then. Can you barter at pawn shops, though? I don't know. 13, 24, 10. Tell me about them. Then I saw this pink ring, which is made of glass. That was $28. Beautiful. They look good. They look like a family heirloom. They do look. You can hand that down. This is my question. Ah. Is everything in a pawn shop stolen or. In there with a sad story attached. Yes. Yeah. 13, 20, 4, 10. Can you enlighten me? Is there bad juju mm. on these rings? Okay. Have they been either stolen and then offloaded? For I'm imagining if I'm paying $19, mm. someone would have sold it for five. Yeah. You know? Um, or, or a sad family heirloom. It's, the, you know, it's a my, regrettable my, my, sale. My auntie Marjorie. Hand this to me. Yes, but it was now, significant. I've, now I've hit on hard times. Or yes. someone got murdered and their jewellery's in the pawn shop. Exactly. But I just need to know how pawn shops work and 
whether or not I need to have, I need to get a smudge stick onto these rings 13, and 20, get rid 14. of the vibes. We'll take a bunch of calls next. We want to know all of this. I'm yes. excited about this. Yeah, and if you've ever used a pawn shop, tell mm. me how it works. Mm. All right. I might pawn off my family. <laughs> ever wanted to offer the team some direct feedback? Well, you can. Shoot us an email at breakfast at nova100.com.au to be part of Chrissy Sam and Brownie's mailbag. Book a holiday. And if you do, uh, consider whatif.com, W-O-T-I-F.com. I bought that? two rings from a pawn shop, P-A-W-N. Mm. $19 and $28. They're cool, aren't they? They are cool, Sonny. Would you wondering. wear them together? I am wearing them together right yeah. now. Look good. I don't know whether they do. I'd so, like to know the history of them. Yeah, by asking, are you saying, do they go together? Is that what you're saying, Jonathan? Yeah. Yes. I think it's fa- a fair question too. Yeah. Maybe I'll put them on different hands. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Yay. It's better like that. Yeah. But I, it's the first time I've ever been in a pawn shop mm. um, and first, certainly first time I've ever made a purchase. Are they common? Like, I don't feel as if I'm paying much attention There's to There's heaps on Chapel Street. Is there? Heaps. Oh, yeah, up the Windsor end. Yes. There's heaps. And they're chockers full of rings and watches and... Secrets. Secrets. Yes. And I've always wondered, is everything in there stolen? How do they mm. work? Or is there a history behind the everything in there that it's been a regrettable sale? I believe in the juju of objects, and I'm nervous that these rings have bad juju. Mm, okay. Jake from Greenvale. Jake. If you really are nervous, I'd be taking them back, that's for sure. Really? Yeah. No, I, don't, I think I reckon 90% of items in a pawn shop would be not... Um, Legit- yeah, well, legitimately not. <laughs> bought or legitimately yeah. purchased, wow. Jake. Is that what you're trying to say? Sold. <laughs> Wow. Really? Why do you have this inside information? Um, I, I may or may or not have been one of these people that have um, wrongfully sold an item. Wow. <laughs> All right. I like this. I like you. Jake. I like yeah, your so, turn of um, phrase, Jake. Hey, Jake, uh, do, do you go in there and you barter them? So if you go in to sell them, so let's say you've uh, come across these items because they're just sitting out in the street. <laughs> Uh, and you took them into a pawn shop, would you barter for the price? Oh, yeah, but that wouldn't give you much leeway. I, for example, this is something that was mine. I had a, a signed Buddy Franklin, one of 23 limited edition signed jumper. Um, Did you get it from Ricky Nixon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, my partner bought that for $1,600, and, and I was upset when he left it, left off, so I took it into the pawn shop. And they gave me seventy bucks. Oh my! Wow! God. Oh, really? Yeah. And Did... yeah. So I was that angry that I took it at the time. But <laughs> <laughs> so this, mm. so this ring that I've paid nineteen dollars for, how much did the soul get for it? That oh, they would have got probably five bucks. Wow. wow. It's a fair markup. Might go into the pawn shop business. Yes, mate. You go. But if, if say, for example, if I wanted something back, you'd go in there and get a loan. From an item, say if something was worth a thousand, they might give you three hundred dollars if you're lucky, and that's the, that's if you're paying it back, and they'd make you pay probably twice back. But yeah, but what about Jakey? If I if I um, broke into my neighbour's place mm. who I didn't like, probably the previous address, yeah, mm. and I stole <laughs> I stole a legitimate, let's say a Rolex, yes, and it was a legitimate Rolex. And it went in there, and it was worth twenty thousand dollars. Like when Rolexes hold their price, would they still give you at, a fair value? You'd be looking at probably, I'd say, four to five thousand. What? Yeah. Really? And you'd be that's lucky. Crime doesn't pay. No, John. It doesn't pay. I'm getting out it of this. It doesn't pay. Wow, yeah. that's interesting. Well, it, does, it does pay it still because enough, it still got you enough to sell it as something legit online. That's how you get your money, but. Okay. All right. Good tip. Well, I Bye. guess it pays four grand if you steal it. That's yeah. right, because you had nothing. It's not your thing. Oh, that's a good point. It's yeah. not All your right. thing. Well, crime does yeah. pay. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Jakey. Jakey. Now, Justin, you used to work in a pawn shop. Yes, I did. Um, now, those rings, um, are they sterling silver or are they just normal metal rings? Sterling silver. Okay, so what you're looking at is probably around about twenty to twenty five dollars if you want them if they went back there. Mm-hmm. But um, you look at the um, 
on the inside of the ring, um, there should be some branding on the inside of the ring mm-hmm. that would be able to tell you how much sterling silver there is in that ring. Oh. Right. Okay. My question, though, Justin, she doesn't want to look now. Is um, no, I've seen, I've seen them. They're, they're silver. It's rings. an old number plate. Also, <laughs> also, what do you want for for nineteen bucks? Yeah, true. You know true. what I mean. Yeah. Um, Justin from Kobe, my question to you is. Were they stolen at some point off somebody that's currently missing them? Well, being working at a um, pawn shop, I think half the stock at the shop are stolen. Half of the stock may be, like, given to the store itself. So okay. you're looking... Yeah, so you're probably looking... If the rings were stolen, probably 20 25 bucks. If they weren't, maybe 100 200 bucks. Now, another question, Justin... How does that work for a business to accept stolen goods? Well, apparently we can't accept stolen goods because we've got a right to refuse people that bring in stolen goods to the pawn shop and try and get a pawn. Yeah, but they can just say, no, it's not stolen, this is my stuff. But we we actually do a background check on that particular item. Hmm. Really? Yeah. How do you so, do that? So, say like, what was that? How do you do that? Okay, so you know how the, um, where the computers are, right? There's a little office behind mm. the counter and there's computers there that they do checkups on, like, say, if you want a um, Brisbane Lions jumper. Sorry, John O'Brown, I know mm. you play for Brisbane. Um, so if you get a Brisbane Lions top, right, mm. and... The tag's taken off. Straight away, there's an instant find that it's stolen. Ah. But, I mean, I, I don't want to confuse you, but you just said that half the stuff in a pawn shop is stolen and then in the same sentence said that you're not allowed to accept stolen yeah. goods. I don't understand how Knowing that works. Accept. Yeah, they don't accept. You got you got it right, Brownie. Um, they don't accept it, but half the time people don't even look to see if it's stolen. Right. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. Gotcha. Just sort of turn a blind eye. So if uh, I... So it's a bit of a wink, wink, ah. nudge, nudge. Yeah, right. Don't tell, don't my, ask. My auntie gave me this, but I really knocked it off from the neighbour. Here's my question to you, Justin. Let's say that a Rolex was stolen from my house and um, it's like engraved... Like John O'Brown. Yes. Like John O'Brown. Mm, yes. And it's uh, en- engraved in the back with my name, for example. Oh, no, no, maybe not. nothing so identifiable, but yeah. I turn up to your pawn shop and that is yep. my watch and it's stolen. How do I get that watch back? Okay, so what we would do is we would ask John O'Brown if he um, got it from anywhere else and if he said it, he got it from a mate, well, that'll be fine. But if he stole it from your house, we wouldn't take it because it would have his fingerprints on it. Interesting. Mm. Okay, well, there that you go. That has really cleared things up for me, <laughs> Yeah, Justin. it really has. Uh, it's as clear as what, Jonathan? Mud. Mud? Um, so what do you think about these rings? Is it bad juju or what? <sighs> yeah. Definitely stolen. Yeah, definitely stolen. Oh, yeah. no. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Danny McGinley, a comedian and bloody great friend of the show. By the way, Danny's uh, helping raise funds for the people of Ukraine via ukrainecrisisappeal.org. Check that out. And if you want to see him live, his show's up and about at the Victoria Hotel this Saturday and Sunday. Tickets at comedyfestival.com.au. Here's Danny. First things first, Danny. Welcome. Thank you, Swanee. One of my favourite things is finding out what the pre-recorded uh, intro is saying about yes. me. It's always it always just pumps you up. Well, you you are, guys are great. You for are that. married to a U- Ukrainian. I am. Yes, that's right. So it's yeah, been a, it's been a fun connection. fun couple of months. Jeez. Man, <laughs> very difficult. I'm scared that people are getting used to that news now, like normalising all this horror. I agree. Mm. Are you finding that, up. Danny? Yeah, it is getting... Well, we thought it'd be over within, like, three days. Yeah. That's why it was so depressing. But they're fighting back. It's uh, it's actually really inspiring. And, and I think a lot of Australians are identifying with Ukraine because we've got the similar sense of humour. We both live in countries designed to kill us. Us with extreme heat, <laughs> then with extreme cold. Us with uh, crocodiles, snakes, spiders, then with Russians. Uh, right, okay. But you've seen the reaction of the Ukrainian people. It, it reminds me of... It, it, it's what I think Australians would react if we got invaded. Like, seeing old ladies just carrying their shopping, looking at a soldier and going, Oi, why are you here? 
Yeah. Mate, F off. Yeah, F great. off. And did you see the woman who threw sunflower seeds at a soldier and went, put them in your pocket so when you die, something useful grows? Ooh! Yes. That's a good bird. He would have yeah. turned around and walked off for sure. Uh, now, you're Bulldogs. I am, yes. Uh, what's wrong with them, mate? Are you still suffering a premiership hangout from 2016? <laughs> yeah, well, no. We gave up kicking straight for Lent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. yes <laughs> Anyone can win a game by kicking goals through the well, big post. Well, you've only post. got one person in the team that actually kicks goals. That's Aaron Norton. Yeah, that's you, true. Oh, no, we got no. We all share it around and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, we'll be, we'll be right. You know, anyone can peak in April, Demons. Uh, you're Whatever. A, you are you are a comedian, obviously. You've been a comedian for seven thousand years. That's us. that's right. I wanna I wanna check your temperature on whether something is funny or not. Okay. okay? <laughs> All right. So when you ask somebody to take a photo of you with oh, no. someone <laughs> just say you're at a pub yeah. after a gig or something and yeah. your comedy hero's there. Yeah. Say, I don't know, Luke Heggie, mm. for example. And you say to your friends, mm. Nick Cody and, and Danny McGinley, can you take a photo of me and Heggy? Yep. Um, is it funny to pretend that you're taking a photo but actually you're just taking selfies of yourself? It's absolutely hilarious. It is it's not. the greatest <laughs> And then the, greatest the poor joke. person who wants the photo with their comedy hero checks the phone roll and there's 14 photos of this chump, Danny McGinley, and his idiot friend, Nick <laughs> Cody. Good stuff. And no photos of Heggy. Hey. It, you are a dad, and that's good dad gear. Good dad gear. Is it, though? Hey, I was off duty, okay? It's not like I'm doing my gags God damn professionally. You, God I was damn that you. one. God damn. That. Hey, what's the, what's the COVID attitudes been like this year's Comedy Festival compared to last year's? Man, last year, I mean, we all sort of thought that Melbourne had, you know, come through the worst of it, yeah. and, but it was zero cases. No one, barely anyone was actually vaccinated. Now... People, yeah, numbers are down. We fully admit that. Please come out, see comedy this Three weekend. Days Three days there. left. Three days left. But the ones who come out, there's just a confidence. And I think it's from everyone just... Ha- We've had it. Whoever's out yeah. has had it. You've had it, haven't you, Brad? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, My wife's had it twice. Bag, let's do I've it. I've had it. I yeah. tested positive last night. We've all had <laughs> it. Hey! <laughs> all I, um, just in time for the ISO changes. It's, all, it's so lovely. I went out with a group of old school friends last night to see Joel Creasy's opening night. He's fabulous, by the way. Go and see him. It's only a very short run because he's coming to the festival very late. <laughs> Three All and a half weeks you in. You saved the best for last. Yeah, that's right. He's at the town hall. Go see him. He's amazing. Um, but my friends hadn't really, it's with their first time in the city in months, and they could not believe the, the vibe. And mm. um, it's very exciting. It's if great. If you're putting off going in, stop it. Yes, stop absolutely. It. There's mm. people everywhere and it's wonderful. And Melbourne has been so united and divided over mm. the past 12 months. We've never been more div- uh, united than we were in May last year when Sydney had the outbreak and we didn't. Yes, oh, that's Remember right. how glorious it was? I watched <laughs> Gladys every day. Just, yeah. you know, shut up, kids. Auntie Gladys on. Yeah. How many cases? Yeah, that's well, the, right. The rivalry between the states has been uh, funny to watch. <gasps> Some would say very immature. Like, yeah. and I, I'm oh, on board with it yeah, too. Yeah. Like, I was resenting Perth. Yeah. Oh, man, I was resenting a lot of New South Wales because we, in 2020, that lockdown, yeah. there was a lot of patronising... Instagram mm. posts from people oh. in like Byron Bay on a beach going, oh. you know, with a beer gun, this one's for you, Melbourne. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stay strong. Yes. And we're better than that. Yes. I, I know we're better than that. I've not seen a single Victorian put a, up a post on Instagram saying, stay strong, New South Wales. Look, here's a photo of my dry backyard. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hey McGillay is on until the end of the comedy festival. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fri- oh, Saturday, Sunday are the shows that are uh, raising money for Ukraine crisis appeal. Mate. So Great. please well come done. along. I'm expecting halfway through the show, Putin rings me and surrenders. Wow! Yeah. Sure, have a laugh and do something good. It's up and about. Get your tickets from comedyfestival.com.au. Thanks, Danny McKinley. Thank you. Go, dogs. Yeah, brother. Whoa. La, 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 la. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your wintry old Thursday. Mm. But I'm feeling good because Sam Pang's here. Whoa! Oh, my God. Did you God, remember Tino. that? What do you call it? Do you have nothing? Uh, hey, as soon as the intro started, I was sweating because I didn't have the Eddie Vedder thing. Yeah. But now I've found it. Oh, God. What a day. <laughs> it is that bag. One, two, three, four. Woo! We got there, brother. You just had to trust oh, me. Yo, not good. only were we going to trust you, <laughs> we were going to absolutely not talk until you did your job. Woo! One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah! Oh, 
You know what I like? I like... Every day is magic with well, you, Dino. I Every wasn't day. Dino uh, at the top of hour at 6 o'clock, though. Jackie turned the, his desk on in the next studio. Jackie lost his mind. Cut off our sh- introduction. It, does anyone on this show know what they're doing? No. 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 Including you. Yeah. You can be on a master of the craft compared oh. to you three. Is that right? So. Is that right? Ah. Oh. God. Hey, we've got such a huge show coming up. The beautiful Kate Langbrook is en route. She yeah, has well, sent us. She may have turned the car around. <laughs> she right. sent us. She yeah. sent us a video of her up early with her bright tangerine KitchenAid. She's cooking really something for her friends. For us? Yes. I'm not eating it. I'm so excited. Hey, the way the show's going, she might be back on the billboard. Harry Styles. <laughs> <laughs> Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Book a holiday. What if? It's Aussie for travel. Jeez, I wish I'd booked a holiday for the school holidays. Grave error. Well, there's still time, isn't there, Swanee? No. You've still got, no? Just a quick getaway towards the end? No. Hey, for our new listeners to our show, a cha- the change of pace is something we've really... Oh, um, no, I've been celebrate. waiting for this. No, no, it's not... It's a relax, Christine. Oh, okay. So, well, that was very guilty was of you. I was going to say, what, you, what was that? What have you done? Because I'm doing Mondays on the project and on my debut episode. Oh, was... we'll see. We might get to it. <laughs> that is a crunchy well, uh, What? Oh, yeah. So the project's known for that. Change of pace, of course, If, if like I said, for new listeners, it's just a... It's a jarring... Change of topic, where traditionally you and usually uh, on it's either the project or oh, Hitch is what you know, <laughs> Hitch, of course, because they, um, you know, on the news, mm. they go to Tony Jones or they go to something a bit light, you know, 20 minutes in, and then he's mm. got to go back to serious news. So, yeah, like change look, of pace at, look at this, look at this snow leopard, very, yeah, very Juggling. yawning, yeah, yeah. it's self explanatory. It's, it's a jarring change of pace where something's you know, it's a light hearted topic, mm. and then. Wow! Do they change? They crunch in with a change of pace. Mm. Now this is the this is the definitive example. I know we've. We, I don't think you can play it enough, and regular listeners will have heard a lot. But this is the definitive example, and this is on the Mount Rushmore of change of paces. PGA champ that might have some explaining to do on the home front after shunning a good luck kiss. Look, it's not a great feeling, uh, but that's coming up <laughs> a little later in sport. Please, <laughs> very funny. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Human remains found under <laughs> yes. an Altona yes. rail. It is again. never not funny, and we've been enjoying that. How long for? Oh, oh, it's a couple of years. years. Like you said, we're mm-hmm. not. Really, you're not laughing at the story. You're just laughing at the tone, at the change of tone in the news ball. I set. love the way that uh, Hitch gets his mouth ready. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and that little Human intake remains. of breath. <laughs> their little. <gasps> He sort of gasps, <laughs> preemptive gasps. Can I give you a couple? That, that that's the definitive example. There's a couple of the underrated right here. Can you just just enjoy this oh one? God, I love Thank you, segment. Georgia and Pete. A fun fact: this basket weighs 600 kilos. The crew made me bring it in all on my own, but I think I will get them to help me carry it back to the truck. <laughs> I should think so too. Thank you very much, Lavinia. A delivery rider crushed by a truck has spoken publicly. <laughs> crushed by a truck. Underrated, but he's spoken, Have so we no heard death. That I, I'm sure we've played yeah, it. We've played, it, played it, but it's. I just think it's a bit underrated. It the, is underrated. We've gone from Lavinia in a hot air balloon talking about the basket and all that <laughs> to a delivery. Uh, what was it? Crushed, crushed by, by a truck. truck. Do you mind if we it's enjoy Georgie. it again? That's funny. Yeah. Thank you, Georgia and Pete. A fun fact: this basket weighs 600 kilos. The crew made me bring it in all on my own, but I think I will get them to help me carry it back to the truck. <laughs> oh, I should think so too. Thank you very much, Lavinia. A delivery rider crushed by a truck has spoken oh publicly for the first time. I'll tell you what I have a lot of respect what? for. Hitch's ability to still uh, engage with a fellow reporter. Uh, obviously, they you know, come along and he supports them yeah. and he laughs. And he would know full well what the next story is coming. Yeah. He would know that it's uh, you know some sort of grief. Mm-hmm. Do, well, you we, just, you, we, do you get to the stage where you just don't care? Well, yeah. obviously, with, with Hitch, well, that's about 15 years ago with Hitch, by the way. <laughs> it's, re- it's been tools down for a while with Hitch. Another underrated one? You want one more underrated one? Yes. All right, go, go, go. And the EPL's back, but Hawkeye didn't get the memo. Well, Memo, I can never work that one out. Oh, neither can I. We'll call it an email. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks, Tony. Passengers terrified as a man unleashes on a bus wearing nothing but his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> underrated! A man unleashes on a bus unleashes. wearing nothing on his underwear. So Mate! What did he unleash funny. with? I don't know what he unleashed with, but it, it was... Wow. I will never get sick so, of this. Uh, so that's an under... Those two last two are underrated, don't you reckon? Yeah. All right, so uh, in our little break, there was a couple... I just wanted to play this one. Brownie, 
Can you just explain to Chrissy very, very quickly, you're very good at this, about what in golf, if you use a 56 degree, what does that mean? Well, it's a club for a shorter distance, Swanee, and it gets a lot of height. So you want to put it up like a rainbow, and then it just pops down and stops on the green. Oh, yeah. So this is a this is a, a Fox footy game uh, recently. I think it was St Kilda was playing. I can't remember who they were playing. And the player kicked the ball, Swanee, but he kicked it up really high. Mm-hmm. And Dermy made reference to a 56 degree. Okay. And um, it's this one's great because it's a change of pace, but it's still on topic. Enjoy. To make it a couple in a row for the Saints, gets right underneath oh, it. Taking the 56 degree to that. <laughs> On the terms of golf, best wishes to the Newton family after the passing yes. of Jack as well. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus oh. Christ. Yeah. Whoa. Great Jack Newton, of course. Ben, yeah. ben Dixon's his Passed son-in-law. Up, no, he works for Fox Footy. Of course, we're not. Sad. That's a very, very sad. You know, sad the yeah. the, 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 well, the passing ja- of Jack. Ja- but it's like, whoa, well, that was a. Well, Jack had just passed away that morning. Yeah, well, it was mate. So, so, hey, so topical. Fresh. Hey, topical change of pace. There's a topical. new one. A topical change of pace. <laughs> <laughs> great man, Jack. He was a great man. Hey, we met him, remember? I know, no, we had a beer with him. Hey, we're not him. having a go at the no, we awful never, event. We never that laughed. just sounded wild. I never, know. I never well, laughed. It probably the didn't help the uh, gap that Howie no. left him. <laughs> Jesus. Could have, could have driven no. a bus through that gap. Yes. I wonder if that whole gap he was going, should, should I, I say it? Should, Am I saying it? it? I'm, I'm it? saying it. I'm saying it. I think it was a, be- <laughs> it was a beautiful tribute. Jack yes, would have been proud. He would have loved it. Swanee, you mentioned, listen. You have been doing Mondays on the project. Mm. So so you know what's coming. But was this from your first Monday yeah. night? Yep. <laughs> Did you deliberately do this for us, your friends? No. Oh. So but my lady's onto it, don't uh. you? Know? So you, you can see what's going. You 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 were caught in a hitch moment. Deer in the headlines. Yes. The headlights, as Nath Valvo was talking about sharing a house and how he may never buy a house and he's going to be the oldest, mm. uh, you know, flatmate right. ever. Yeah. And then have a listen to our girl. Listen to Chrissy just crunch on in. I'm going to be the world's oldest housemate. I'm going to be like 95 years old, living in a share house in Brunswick, running after some 30-year-olds who ate my hummus. I can't wait. (laughs) Russia is once again being accused of war crimes after hundreds of bodies have been... Sorry. The minute I started it, I was like, oh, God, it's a change of pace. It's a change of pace. And I'm in the middle of it. And I looked over at Waleed and he was looking at me with his little deer eyes. Yes. Gotcha. Going, suck it, swan. Walk it. Yeah. Can't you call an audible? Like in American football, the quarterback may get a couple of plays sent in. On his uh, earpiece, and he can, you know, he looks at the defence and realises, oh, no, I'm not going to choose that player, I'm going to choose another player. Can't you call an audible at the very last second and go, no, no, we're not doing Russia? No, I can't. I can't. Well. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> hey. Not on my first night. I did no. do it on this last Monday, though. Welcome, Swanee. Welcome to the Mount no Rush. You are now on the Mount Rushmore of Change of Pace. I well would have been all right if he hadn't mentioned Hummus. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Sad news for my wife, Kylie, who uh, frequents a uh, place, a cafe called The Good Collective down at uh, Mailing Road. Uh, gets a local coffee hit every morning. And uh, I was reminded about this by Is that Brady. what it's called? Yeah. It's so close to The Collective, where she used to yeah, go. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, I was reminded by Brody, one of our producers, yeah. that uh, I don't feature in Kylie's Instagram a hell of a lot. <laughs> They're almost non-existent that I have any involvement in her life. Okay. Um, however, Rod, the barista, mm. uh, the hot Brazilian barista, Whoa. Um, just left. He just hung up his boots. Oh, what? Now, here's this gun barista I was telling you about, Swanee. If you didn't go in there for six months, he'd remember your order. There is no sadder day for a woman than when her barista leaves. What about a, the idea that as a hot Brazilian man... Mm. He's called Rod. Rod, yes. <laughs> Rodney. Ah, Rod? Surely Rodrigo. Rod, re, re, oh, Rodrigo. Of course. Well, he should He should, he should, he call, should Rodrigo. call Rodrigo. He should call Rodrigo, not Rod. Rod. Uh, I agree. He's Rod. Uh, so we went down there, good coffee maker, um, but he had to go back to run his parents' coffee farm in Brazil. Wow, he's hardcore. Absolutely hardcore. So, um, yeah, Kyle's went down for his send-off. They had a big send-off the other day, and then she took a phone. Send-off. She had a send-off. <laughs> Was out, out onto the street, so yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of a big turn up, you know, and you sort of wonder why the turn up. But uh, Rod's a 
Yeah, but well, I'll tell you what. Let's just go to the Instagram comments because Coles took the kids down there, got a photo with Rod, posted it on Instagram, and I'll let you decide just on the comments as to... Uh, I haven't seen this. I can't wait. As to how good-looking... Uh, Rod was because say the breakdown of the, the, the farewell was it mostly uh, mostly, uh, mostly middle mothers? aged females <laughs> yeah mothers uh, uh, see let's go on a few of the comments so her her inbox was bombarded with comments I'm just going to list a few of them holy crap I'd move to Brazil for the barista forget the coffee Jeez. next comment what a good looking barista wow looks like we should all move to Brazil whoa. Rocket Rod is simply the best. Rocket, Rocket Rod! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss him too. Uh, next comment, he's a hottie. Next comment, shit, your barista is a hottie. Wow. Yeah. Hottie, let me did have you, a look at him. I can't you, see the post. I need to have a look. Did you, did you uh, know that he was hot? Well, well I thought he's reasonably attractive. Oh, you but I, met I, him? Yeah, I, I met him. I've been down there a couple of times. Has he I made you know. a coffee or is it only for ladies? Yeah. yeah. He did make me a coffee. He's a nice fella, but I didn't frequent. Like now, it starts to make sense. You didn't call him yeah. Rocket when you saw him. You weren't that familiar. <laughs> no, I wasn't. The last one, very handsome barista. I'd be following him to Brazil as well. Hello. Uh, they all just want to go to Brazil. So Swanee's looking at it. Oh, I can't see yeah, it. no, it's, can't it's see all it. gone off. So anyway, oh. Rod, the, Rocket Rod, the hot barista, has just left. So there's a lot of crying ladies around the. Uh, the suburb of Camberwell, Swanee. 13, 24, 10. Where can they go next for a bit of eye candy while they're getting their strong latte? I think oh. it's a, a really important phone up. Okay. And uh, we'll take recommendations. Did he I flirt? I have none, I'm sorry. Was he a flirt? Was that why the well, old ducks were coming in? I think in? it was the accent. Yeah. I think it was the accent of, um, you know, the Brazilian accent. You know, all, also, the, girls, all the girls swoon over that. Also, he was topless. When he, <laughs> when he, when he was making... <laughs> no, it made mm. froth on his yes. nipples. Were no, you, no, no. Excuse me. Were you ever... Um, were you ever... Did you ever doubt the strength of your union? Because, you know, you and... You and Carl's have gone the distance. Well, Carl, well, like, Carl's I was going to say, did you... Well, Carl's didn't drink coffee there for a period. And maybe now you actually didn't drink coffee. It's start to it's start all coming together now. The last mm. six months, she got about four coffees a day. Whoa! And also, there's a cafe at mm. the during, end during school hours. There's a, there's a cafe <laughs> at the was at work. There's a cafe at the weird. end of your street. There's a cafe at the end of your street. Yeah. Sometimes does she very don't. good coffee. Sometimes she'd whip out yeah. for a she coffee. She never went there. No. <laughs> Ten o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. Nova. Chrissy Swan, Sam Pang, and Jonathan Brown. Chrissy's celebrity stuff. Guys, I've got an update on Black China. Oh, good, um, good, 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 good. Things are getting interesting. There's a court case at the moment. She's taking the Kardashians to uh, court over defamation charges. What's her mum's name, Swanee? Uh, Tokyo Tina. Is it Tina or Tony? <laughs> Tony, Tokyo Tony. Sounds, sounds like a great. Like a, sounds like a trotter. Yeah. Like, you know, she'd be a Tokyo Tony running in the Inter Dominion this week at Harold Park. It does. I think Don't it sounds like a great place to get um, chicken katsu. Oh, yes. No, yeah. um, but here's a headline that I think you're all going to enjoy. Black China insists she was just joking when she put a gun to Rob's head. <laughs> <laughs> only joking. Just joking. The gun no. wasn't loaded. Not only was uh, Black China just joking around when she pointed a gun at her fiancé or boyfriend's head. She also said wrapping an iPhone cord around his neck was done in jest. Horseplay. Oh, Light it up. Worst. Light it up, Rob. God. Do you I always have to have... I some pictures, yes or no? Yes or no. Yeah. Sam? Well, whenever I am asked, I always tell the truth. And that is... Yes, I am. <laughs> Still texting. Honesty is the best policy. Like, you've got to be honest, yeah, don't you? absolutely. Black China testified that Rob was playing video games later that night that when she put the gun to his head and... <laughs> I mean, a horse play. Can I just say West. something? Yeah. Uh, it's not an official verdict, mm. but black uh, being with Black China, it sounds like it's an exciting time. <laughs> there's, there's lots going on. You know uh, what I mean? You, you, know, you don't want to be boring. It's like playing oh, golf with you. It's exciting. <laughs> it's <laughs> but really? It's, there's lots going on all the time. Unbelievable, isn't it? No, I misunderstood, Rob. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Look who's here. It's time to get classy. Hottest O'Reilly. Hot. He talks about football. Oh. Mostly on Twitter. 280 characters. And on this show as well. Welcome.
welcome, sir. Oh, thank you. I've uh, dashed up here this morning to be with you. Thank you. It's always good to see you. Do, do you like that's? Of course, that's an intro that we all love. Mm. It's, a, it's a catchy little number. But what if I introduced you like this? If we just said, "Welcome to the show, Mr. Titus O'Reilly." <laughs> So uplifting, isn't it? Don't you? What about that? So I wrecked it, Sam the other day. I was, <laughs> while you guys were on break and they were playing the best of, mm. which no one is compiling that. That is just a random generator. <laughs> that out. 100%. Yeah. And they put, played the bit where you guys managed to play Billy Joel's Down Easter Alexa. Fine right. song. On primetime FM radio, yeah. well, which think... is a 1989 Stormfront deep cut. Deep cut slash classic. Classic. And... I think I think it was the only one. We we're playing tune or not a tune uh, with Jack. Yeah, and Jack didn't think this it was, was the a only tune. one that it was not a tune. Not All a tune. the others. What's were the bang. origins of Down Easter Alexa? Why well, did you play it? It's, it's, about, it's why? about a. I don't know why we played it, but I know it was from the Stormfront album. I know. Yeah. I know why we played it. Why? Because we we're doing a workout. Yes. And I, had, I had my playlist. <laughs> we're down in the car park, getting gym car park strong yeah. after work. <laughs> And we had this, uh, all, all the classics, a bit of ACDC, yeah. Run to Paradise, uh, you know, Thong all songs. Those, you know, things that uplifting when you come to the gym. And then Down Easter Alexa came on yeah. and just pumped through it's the car. It's a bang, you got to run through a wall if you listen to the tale of a it's trawler a man losing Oh, yeah, yeah, no, they, they play it at my Pilates class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> really um, let's talk about the new uh, umpiring bits and bobs. Well, they, the AFL have been blowing up this week about you know, gesturing at the umpires mm. can cause Ooh, dissent and yes. they're trying to crack down on that. It's a 50-metre penalty and they're saying they're, they're only going to get harsher on it, not lighter on it. And it made me think of all f- great umpiring stories over the years across all sports. Mm. And I, and often there was like a bit of goodwill and theatrics amongst umpires and players, and there mm. still is to an extent, but it was less rigid. So one of my favourites ever was, was during a baseball game and... Uh, the umpire Tim McClellan standing there and he makes a call and the manager comes storming out of the dugout all acting angry and the crowd, it's a full crowd, they're all yelling and he, and the manager storms up front up to the umpire and says, look, I know you just actually made the right call but we're not playing very well and the crowd's furious. <laughs> Do you mind if I just stand here and pretend to argue with you for the next few minutes? And the umpire goes, yeah, do whatever you want, you know, like just you can do that. So they start gesturing That's and things. Great. And he starts, no one can hear what the manager is saying, but what he's actually saying is, we went to a really nice restaurant last night. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to it? And the umpire's cursing and kicking the dirt back at him going, no, I haven't been to it. Is it good? And the whole crowd's thinking this is this is great. great fight going on. Because I might try that tonight. Yeah, that would be lovely. I think that's enough now. And then tosses him out of the game that's and the crowd great. goes, oh, he stood up for us. So this was sort of the, you know, the stuff that happens. But what am I... Baseball is, manage- that is, baseball is, the, baseball is the one where the, the managers get right up in the... Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. oh, haven't you seen Naked Gun? You know, oh, when they, you know, the manager gets into Frank Drebin and the umpire. Yeah. Well, and off they a, go. Well, the other favourite was in, in baseball. Lenny Dykstra who played for the Philadelphia Phillies. He was a, a veteran. It was a pre-season game and it was in Florida and it's boiling hot. Like, I think it's about 42 degrees. Mm. And so Lenny keeps trying to do things to get kicked out of the game, arguing with the umpire. And the umpire goes, I know you just want me to throw you out of the game because it's hot. No matter what you do, I will not throw you out of the game. <laughs> and so he just stopped doing things straight away because he realised that wasn't going to work. Not going to work. fantastic. But probably one of my favourites was Steve Young, who was a quarterback, for, went on, won a Super Bowl with the 49ers, but was playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in his second year. And he'd been to a college called BYU, which was a big college um, in Utah. And he said he's in the, he's in the huddle and they're not playing very well. And the head referee taps on the shoulder and says, can I talk to you for, for, for a second? And he goes, okay, which is very weird. Mm. And he turns around and says, and the um, ref says, um, hey, my daughter's going to BYU and uh, I was just wondering if uh, you'd like to take her out on a date. <laughs> and he's going, what? <laughs> he's saying, yeah, I just um, wondered if you wanted to take her out on a date. And he's like, um, okay, and he can't believe it. They're in the middle of a game. And he goes, oh, okay, what's her name? And the umpire tells her and he goes, okay. And he goes back to the huddle, they play a bit more. And then later in the game, they're down 
and then they, and Steve Young's trying to mount a comeback, <laughs> and he scrambles out of the pocket. He takes this big hit, which makes him fumble, turns the ball over. That means game over. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, it was a legit hit and everything. All of a sudden, a penalty flag comes in, and the umpire's awarded him a free play, says the thing, and then wanders over the as he gets up, and the umpire wanders over and goes, she likes Italian. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Stunning. <laughs> wow. That is great. <laughs> Titus is here. Don't move. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Nah. Is, we were talking about umpire descent before, and you were giving us some, some examples from around the world. Because you don't just talk footy, but just on football, Jonathan. But you know, a current day Fox Footy pundit right there, Tyler. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> we're just wondering you. what your thoughts are because uh, there's your your boy, uh, your premiership teammate, Brad Scott, who's in charge of the whole thing. Yeah, who never dissented an umpire <laughs> in his life. No, no he way. double he doubled down yesterday because it's been quite a big topic. People saying did, it's yeah. gone overboard, and he's just said no. Well, this had- is what we're doing, and also the umpires will be instructed to pay. All of them. The problem was that, you know, there seemed to be some inconsistency in the way it was adjudicated. Mm. So your thoughts, John? Well, the umpires are not there to make the rules. They're there to adjudicate the rules. And Brad made that very clear. The way I see it last weekend, it's challenging for the umpires because they've been told to, hey, no matter if there's any dissent shown towards you, you must pay the free kick. Senior experienced umpires seem to be happy to pay them or because they know that's their job to adjudicate. Maybe some of the younger, less experienced umpires were a little bit nervous about it because it does get them offside with the players where they want the respect from the players and they were maybe reluctant to pay them. So that's where the inconsistency lies. But I'm sure Brad would have told him in no uncertain terms this week, pay the free kick. Oh, and then by the end of the season, uh, players will have stopped doing it. The shortage of umpires is the major driver for this. There is a massive shortage of umpires in this country and that is the whole reason for it. So, and when they say six thousand, they reckon that number is they gross, could also grossly pay underestimated. Well, they another. could pay them properly; would also help there. <laughs> well, I used to get five bucks to do the boundary when I was a kid. Yeah, I thought five bucks was pretty weirdly. Good. <laughs> prices haven't changed. No, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's the that. issue. But, but having Brad Scott now stand up for the umpires on umpire descent—that's like one of those shows in America <laughs> where a serial killer starts helping the cops. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it couldn't be more yeah. off the reservation. Now I think you can. So what we, you know, they've got to be clear on what you can say and, not, and can't say to umpires. Because otherwise, what is dissent? Can you say what was that free kick for? Yeah, is a legitimate can. question, right? Absolutely. Unless I was pushing me. As long as, as long as you don't put your arms out, though. But yeah, but it seems to me if you gesture and all yeah. this. But one of my favourite, and it shows you that this is a guy called Bird, Birdie Oud, who was a Celtic player uh, and a legend of the club. He he showed the way to approach an umpire in a careful and respectful way. I've modified the language here okay. for the morning. But he once said to one of the officials, he said, "If he said if I call you in the middle of a match, because if I call you an idiot, Mister Wharton, which was the umpire's name." Mm. Will I get booked? And the uh, umpire said, the referee said, yes, Mr. Earl, you'd be in trouble. And he said, well, what if I just thought you were an idiot? <laughs> what would happen then? <laughs> and he said, the, umpire, the referee said, well, if you just thought it, nothing would happen. And so he said, okay, well, Mr. Wharton, I think you're an idiot. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> nice. But this is what we want to see refs also, do. Also, 50 metre penalty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's but what I would like to see refs do. And this was a great one. There was a referee in the uh, uh, in an English league game in soccer, and he lost his temper in the middle of the match. Um, he was um, umpiring the referee in this match, and the opposition goalkeeper protested a point. Uh, a call and started yelling at the referee. And the referee, this guy, got so annoyed he threw his whistle on the ground and took off his shirt as if to fight him. <laughs> And then calmed down and sent himself off. Oh, my God. Really? Gosh. The referee went, I'll give myself a red card for my behaviour. <laughs> and the match had to be called off. Truly bizarre. Remember but it's that. quite disarming. When your kids do that, it's like, oh, okay. Oh. It's a really good tip if you're listening. We'll take your shirt off. Well, no, put yourself in time out. I think yeah. that's that, that Rod, really... Rod the barista down there. That's what he does when yeah, he's making absolutely. coffee, doesn't he? For yeah, calls. yeah, well, that's right. Cool. Hey, Titus, we didn't clear this bit of the chat, but um, Shaq's coming to town, right? And we mm. reckon Pangas yeah, we talked. Be... We, last time I was here before yes. the holidays, we were. Sam said just off air, can you help me launch my campaign to host this? Yes! 
Who Good that's idea, it. right? That's going to cost you. <laughs> privately, of course. Privately. <laughs> Very the, the privately. Are in motion, though, I woke up, there's 40 texts on my phone. You know what <laughs> You know what I said? You know what I actually said at the time when I was making a case for if when Shaq comes out here that someone other than the, tradi- the, the usual suspects should in- possibly in interview In fairness, yeah. it did seem you were making a case against certain people. Rather than for you. Right. Well, that's why I'm remembering that I did. I mentioned, I said, I think I said as an example, uh, Shaq at the at Rod Laver Arena being interviewed by Titus O'Reilly or yes. Dave Thornton yeah. or something like that is, yeah. more, is that is a wonderful yeah, moment. Yeah, but oh, you were putting us out as like weaker stalking yeah, horses. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that, yeah. if you can't get me, <laughs> I said these two are available and we'll do it and very, very, very cheap. cheap. Yeah, very cheap. cheap. I'm, all I'm saying is it's a good idea. I really hope they don't go with someone like. Richard Wilkins. Mate, well, you know what, Shaq? <laughs> Richard <laughs> Wilkins and Shaq. You know hey, who wouldn't go and see that? Me. You know what Shaq does? Shaq, uh, uh, when he's at a restaurant, uh, you know, and tipping's a huge thing in America. Mm. And I remember him telling this story. He said, you know, might, you might ask him about this, Sam, when you interview him. <laughs> uh, he, said, he said just to the waits, whoever's been looking after him, the waiter says, you know, I want to give you a tip. How much do you think it was worth? And... Whatever they say, he he'll pay. Really, really. And the highest he's ever got is four thousand. Whoa! So, but Frank Sinatra used to come to a Melbourne regularly, but it was like one time it was a big gap of like twenty years, and he was staying at the same hotel. And he said to this woman, "What's the biggest tip you've ever got?" Who looked after him all week, and she said forty thousand dollars. He went, "Okay, here's sixty thousand dollars." And she goes, "Wow!" And he said. Who was the person that tipped you forty thousand dollars? And she said, "You last time." You were <laughs> Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie, the podcast. Comedy festival is still on in your beautiful city, Melbourne. Get in and enjoy it. I went and saw our colleague and acquaintance, <laughs> Joel Creasy, last night. Good, eh? It was so good. His show is so great. It only opened last night. He's come late to the festival. What was the venue? Town Hall, the big room. Ooh. The big room, and he did was. Did he fill it, or did he have to put some curtains up? I think he filled it. It was a, nice. such an honour and Good such job. a thrill for him. Um, you know, because growing up, he'd seen all his heroes there. So, hell yeah, it was That's a awesome. wonderful evening. Go and see Joel. Go and see anyone. And uh, one of our favourites on this show is uh, the great Ursula Carlson contemplating sneaking into the city tonight to see her show because she was one of my favourites last year. If you want to go, how sneaky is it if you're announcing it? That's a good point. Thank you. Very, yes. Thank you very, very much. Very good, I'm, point. good observation. Thank I'm you. hoping. I'm hoping this is on in my kitchen at home, and oh, this the is kids just, have heard it. This is the equivalent of you leaving a note on the on the bench, is it? Yeah. Right. Again, Mum. Right. Um, well, it's a good reminder. There's only it finishes Sunday night. That's the thing. So if you can get in, why wouldn't you? And. Let's give away a double pass right now to see the great Ursula Carlson. Whoa. Huge. Her show is It's Personal. Mm. It's on tonight at the Town Hall after Joel Creasy, I believe. What a double act. Melbourne International Comedy Festival wraps up this Sunday. Final tickets on sale now at comedyfestival.com.au. Well, the two big prizes at the top of our prize sheet. <laughs> that and a copy of Life and Football by Jonathan Brown. <laughs> Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Good morning, Melbourne. It's Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Uh, what if it's if you're booking a holiday? It's easy. It's Aussie for travel. Yeah. What's that? You want a sense of the day? Yes, I mm. do. I want some tropical stuff. There was a debate last night. Mm. First debate. I heard that. Instead, you were watching a... Lego Masters. And... <laughs> Lego Masters. Lego Masters. <laughs> You're right. You should do more voiceover work. It's terrifying. Welcome to Lego Masters. Hey, how is, Have a good time. How is Sex Machine Brickman looking? He's good. Yes. He had a change up of his runners. It yes. is. Yeah, he rocks the runners like Jerry Seinfeld. Apparently he leaves them on too, if you know what I mean. I don't know what that means. First election debate saw, apparently, I don't know how official this is, that Al- Albanese with a slim win over Morrison. And that's that's from Sky News, so that's... Wow, Jeez, that must, must, have, must, have, must have hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, I don't know. That's um, it was some big topics. I, I, the, the phrase, I heard it was the, the most phrase, boring thing of all time. The phrase "turn back the boats" is still around in 2022. Yeah. So that's good to know, isn't it? So the public debate has risen uh, to to that. Um, I don't know how many they're having. Do we know how many debates they're having? There's usually mm. three. Well, it goes for, what's it, about five weeks to go, is it? Mm. 
Oh, uh, this is interesting. Netflix has suffered its first subscriber losses in more than a decade. Wow. Really? Why? Did they put the price up or something? Wiping $40 billion off its stock market Woof. value. The number of households using the streaming service actually fell uh, by 200,000 in the first three months of the year due to, unsurprisingly, stiff competition by its rivals, of which, uh, yes, as we all know, from <laughs> it felt like they just used to be Stan, but now there's a lot. It's hard to keep up with. I've got to do something about my subscriptions because, you know, what's happened is, you know, it started with Foxtel and then Netflix came on, on and on and on. It's hundreds of dollars a month. Oh, and yeah. I've, I do you need to take And you don't Netflix. even realise. It's hard Netflix. to find too on the credit card it's, statements. It's impossible. It and it's yeah. also difficult to cancel. You go over that over It's the very difficult fine to tune, cancel. Fine, fine, what is it? Fine tooth comb, do you? Your uh, credit no, card statements? No, people do that. Exactly, Binge. you do. So... <laughs> Netflix, Stan, Binge, Amazon Prime, KO. Paramount Plus, mm. KO, Optus Disney Sport. Plus, Optus Sport. Hey, you. What? Hey, you. Tubi. There's so many. What's that one? Tubi. Tubi's this Tubi. weird off-brand one. The, bo- yeah. the, the yeah. boxing was on last night. Fight, F-I-T-E. Oh, mate. That's what I mean. Yeah. Tell you, it'll, we'll be watching free to air again soon. We'll oh, all go back. And Apple. Is it just, is Apple look at a big one. Absolutely. That's, is it just me or do you wait... I'm now at the stage where I've surrendered to paying all this money and I'm just waiting for my credit card to expire. Well, someone's doing well. And then and then you just <laughs> yeah. go, oh, well, th- then you've got to yeah. sort of re- redo it. You Otherwise, do. it's then too you know hard. To- it, that's right. yeah. yeah. We can claim it on tax, though, because of entertainment. <laughs> Just saying, just saying. That's great. Uh, oh, that makes you feel better. It also hit the. It, it was um, Netflix also suffered a hit because it, re- it did raise prices, Swanee, in some countries, and it also left Russia, got out of Russia. Ah. Oh. Mm. So um, there you go. That's interesting. Uh, Noel Gallagher, you're a you're an Oasis man, Brownie. You Absolutely. Love them, don't you? I went to an Oasis concert. Just me and a heap of uh, British backpackers in Brisbane. Was How it good? Noel nice Gallagher's a guitar night. that they used the night that Oasis split up is for sale. Whoa! Smash. Are we going to do that tack. game that I'm really bad at? About what's it? What's it worth? Mm. It doesn't actually give a. No. I don't. It doesn't have an oh, estimates okay. one. I would argue priceless. Well, no, everything's got a price. Is it still in tax in, or or is it smashed? Was it used as a weapon of some sort between the brothers? He doesn't know. Doesn't know. He hasn't read the story. Sorry. Come on. On oh, by. Great song. All I know is that Liam, what. Liam married Patsy Kensett. That's all you know. Who was the star of Lethal Weapon 2. Mm. The Sp- starting price? Scene, so. I did a fact check. Jackie just told me 150000 is the starting price. Starting price. I was oh. going to say 150000 so it would have been the first time that I got it right. You're right, mm. Bernie. It was, it, was, it was destroyed, but later repaired. Right, okay. There you go. Beautiful. I think it would be worth more in its destroyed state. Well, it's been repaired. So, Well, I suppose if you buy it. You can smash it again if you want. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, particularly if it's only, you know, 200,000 pounds. A <laughs> um, couple of things just to uh, kind of finish. Well, did you? Urgent recall. Popular product pulled from Woolworth shelves. Oh. Two dairy-free milk alternatives sold at Woolworth supermarkets have been pulled from the shelves. Uh, macro-certified organic unsweetened coconut milk. Oh, mm. yes. Jeez. Yeah, you know that one? Yeah, I do. Jeez, it's pretty specific, with a best before date of April 3rd, 2023. Hmm. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you the other one. It's a bit of mystery. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm going to make, make it a game. <laughs> no, the, no, the other one is a sweet rice milk with a best before date of March 29, 2023. But just um, call Dino Direct if you want those details again. <laughs> what um, happens if you drink the duds? I'm going to just find out, eh? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you missed if you missed uh, this earlier, by the way, um, Chris Chris this one, of course, uh, host of um, co-host of the project on a, on a Monday night every Monday. I'm loving it. We too. didn't get a chance to play this, but we did play this be- uh, today this morning for the first time. We played this magnificent. You're playing it again, absolutely for those who didn't hear it earlier. But this one, got caught in a. Well, she's now part of the pantheon in the great change of paces of our time. I'm going to be the world's oldest housemate. I'm going to be like 95 years old, living in a share house in Brunswick, running after some 30-year-olds. Who ate my hummus? I can't wait. (laughs) Russia is once again being accused of war crimes after hundreds of bodies have been... You're going from Nate Valvo and house sharing into Russia and war crimes. Whoa, Swanee, well done. In fairness to me, I didn't laugh the hobbit stuff. No, you're very good at that. I must have known. Oh, I'm sure Nathan loved you not laughing at him. <laughs> Was he very 
very hard position now, to be in. Your has got to get better, though. You've got to be like um, Hutch. You just came into the story too quick. You've got to, for a sense of theatre, you've got to have the big... Yes, yes, yes. Suck the, the, the air the out of the room and then start reading the story. Support from be... you. Well done, Nate Falvo's there giving it his all, trying to make a living as a working comedian on television. You're just going, yeah, finish up, funny boy. Yeah, I was because I knew what was coming. Obviously, can I just ask something? Whatever you want. Is this going to be like the Moomba bits and I'm going to have to listen to this for the next seven years? Yes. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> Can I finish with um, a front buzz on tonight? I only say that because it's actually back at its traditional right. 8.30 on a Thursday night. Giving away tickets? Yes, we are. We if are, you want to yes. come along. And, you know, I'm very, very good during the ads. I very, won't come. No, you can't come. Oh. But um, if, you, no, if, you, if, if, you know, punders would like to come, yes. yeah, people actually love the show and watch it. You then, dog. And tonight we've, we've got Peggy O'Neill from the, the president of Richmond yeah. and also Jack Watts. Yeah. Is he going to bring some squash shorts in? I was, he's he's told me wearing them. Anyway, that's on tonight. And it's Mick, Andy and I, the regular team. So 8.30 tonight. 13, 20, 14, if you want to be yeah, in the audience. Come. 20, one more thing. Cans back on. Headphones back on. Moomba is, is the good old days that we're still able to enjoy in 2018. Oh, that's unbelievable. This is the Chrissy, Sam and Brownie podcast. Texts from the major. Ha, ha, ha. That's a bit of music I asked for. My dad was a major in the army, Major Gary John Swan, and uh, we refer to him as the major on this show. And you guys love his military back. Can you know machine guns? Nah, Why not? Too much. He, uh, oh, machine what? guns around in Vietnam. He's a very what gentle and lovely man. And he's my biggest <laughs> fan. Unequivocally, he is my biggest fan. It is so cute. He reads... He's not cute, by the way. He's not very the time he was in cute. here. <laughs> he's a silent assassin. Jeez. He reads everything that is written about me, to, sometimes to his detriment, because a lot of it's made up, and he'll call to fact check, and I go, no, Dad, that... That one's completely made up. He didn't like me. He did like you. He looked he at likes you everyone. like you were a. He enemy. sat on a big chair. We thought he was on a tower again or something. He's a lovely. He's weirdly had a bayonet in his head. <laughs> He's a lovely man. <laughs> and. Started having flashbacks. It was bad. It was bad for a while. We started to worry. But anyway, he's a nice man. He's a lovely man, and he's my biggest fan. And. Uh, he lives in Queensland, so we obviously, you know, communicate by text and phone call more than we see each other. But he watches everything. And I'm on television a little bit lately. And uh, and, and he watches everything and gives me feedback. With an E with a keen eye, like a, like he's in the bushes. Yes. With a, with a gun. <laughs> Weirdly, when he's watching television, he's got branches coming out of his helmet. <laughs> Doesn't want anyone to see that he's watching it. Here is uh, a text message that I got when the uh, Women's Weekly cover came out and the article. Really good picks and story in Women's Weekly, love. I had to do a t- double take on those Priceline ads. Thought the face looked familiar. Ha ha. Women's Weekly is excellent promo, love, but shame they said your parents are called Pam and misspelled my name, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> what do they, what do they spell R's. it with, two R's? G-A-R-Y. No, he is two R's. Yes. I mean, really, they, they should have just spelled it K-I-L-L-E-R. Attack! That is untrue yeah. and mean. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Mm. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> That's pretty... Um, that's very nice. It you know Wait. keeps an his daughter's career. Absolutely, doesn't miss a trick. Uh, after my first show of Would I Lie to You? Yep. Loved the show, love. He always puts love on the end of sentences, even when he's writing them. Well, hello, hello, love. Love the show, love. You did a great job as compare. Oh, <laughs> Isn't it a gorgeous nice. word. Apparently, he's still wanted for breaching the Geneva Convention. <laughs> Anyway. Are we finishing up now? No, no he's a good guy sure. and he's a yes. lovely father, loving father too. I think it will be a winner. Well done, you. <laughs> is he, how, old, how old is he? 82. Okay. Just turned 80. Well, no, 81. 81. Oh, they're, they're, quite, they're not overly um, 
It's not overly flowery language, is it? I mean, he's pretty straight to the point. Yeah, he's to the point. That's what I love about him. He's a proud dad. Then he watched um, He watched the second episode of Would I Lie to You, which was on a little bit later. Had to shape you, had to tape your show, love. Yeah. <laughs> bit late for me. I watched it this morning. Good show, love. You do it so well. Go, girl. Oh. A lot of love's in there. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't go back and check the text message, text message and think I've got maybe one to me loves. No, no, because that, that's his nickname. That, yeah. Well, that's how he yes. talks to people. Hello, love. Hello, love. You know what else he love loves? Support. Mowing down the enemy. And love is your nickname. His nickname was the Enforcer. Yeah. Enforcer's a good one. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's really inappropriate. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. I've lost my bit. Mm. I've lost touch. Dino's not a great, not a, not a great influence. No, all good, all good. No, Gary all good. Machine Gun Swan. Yeah, there you go. Oh, You're on board works. now. now he's, see, works. that's now better. Away. This feels mean. A bit. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get my mum. I'm gonna get Mares. I don't think Mary would have watched an episode of On the Couch. Ever. Hey, why, why I not? I might get Mares to start sending me text messages like this. What about Brian? This is good, Swan. What about your father? Would he have watched it? Yeah, he does. Big Brazza. Machine Gun Brown. Any... I go, yeah, I got this one. Yeah. <laughs> Just watch the show, love. Great guests. I loved Denise Scott. Excellent job, love. Oh. You are very comfortable in the show, love. I'm sure you'll get another series. <laughs> what do you do, by the way? How do you respond to these? You just punch him back a thumbs up emoji, or no, what are you I doing? Go, thanks, on? thanks, Dad. I really appreciate yeah, you watching. It's good it really support. means a lot. Yeah, yeah nice. it really does. It's good. It really does. And Denise was good to that episode. Denise was wonderful. Just, uh, she always is. Yeah. Um, then I started on the project. Well. Because Dad's old school, right? Yeah. And you know he's he's fine with the radio, whatever. But television mm. is old well, there's something yeah, about it. Yeah, it is he's, magical. His daughters on television. Yeah, yeah. and I feel Prime very time. I feel very lucky to. And be you're doing not stuck it. out in the fourth chair now. You're in the middle chair. Man, you're the host. In the fourth it's chair. It's all about you. Gee, you're looking good, love. It's great to see you in such nice clothes and little trinkets. <laughs> trinkets. <laughs> you know, is he talking about those stolen rings you found from the pawn shop? Yes, oh yes, God. he is. Excellent input as well. You really are on top of the heap. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Then the neck, and then the same night I was on. Would I lie to top you? Top of the so, heap. So it came through later. Another good job as compare love. You certainly look like you enjoy yourself and you contribute well. <laughs> this, is, this is like a school report. I know. It's the best. And I, I, I live for them. I, I wait hey, for them he, to come in. I want him to start actually giving a, a letter at the end. A, B plus, C might. Like, yeah, what yeah. You, you know, because that's... It's a review. Yeah. Look, I think... Um, they're all A pluses. I think they're they? all A triple pluses, yeah. We love you. Um, there's two more to go. It'd be, it'd be a bit one note, wouldn't it? If it was an episode of Gogglebox... And uh, the major was watching his daughter. Oh, be a little bit one. No, it was so a bit sweet. One. It's so sweet that there's like the no room for doubt in Apparently, how he, if his battalion he is. wanted to get information out of the enemy, they'd send in the major. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that was heavy one. Um, geez, you'll. Uh, Swanee, you'll be a bit flat. Imagine if, he, imagine if he's not happy with an episode. Imagine well, she's I would a love bit it. Below and she's, it'll absolutely flatten you if one comes through. They're all very positive. You're a bit off tonight. It's always it's, it's always positive, love. Uh, I just watched your penultimate show, love. Well done! Three exclamation marks. I do not know how you maintain that cheery face after taping all those shows. Here's to another series, love. Oh, Jeez, he's bargain for season two, isn't he? <laughs> and this one. Here we okay, go. so mon- this Monday uh, was another day where I did, so, you know, three days ago, the project at 6.30... And then MasterChef started and then I was on Would I Lie to You? So it was a bit, bit of swan TV. It seems like a lot. I just watched both of your shows of last night, love, and what can I say? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you were so good and so comfortable in the hot seat. TV is good for you. More, please. P.S. Watch out, Carrie Bickmore. Hey-oh! <laughs> And, like, that was an actual, like, proper threat. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Great oh, enough. Oh, God, we're so excited. <laughs> we got the queen here. Oh. Oh.
a comedian, writer, television presenter and radio lady, in which she was the very first person to speak on Nova when it began. Can we talk? Okay, it had to be you to be the first person to speak on air. It was going to be me. That being in 2001, in the very studio she's sitting in right now. And I bet you she feels right at home, as we'd have no aesthetic or technological upgrades <laughs> since that day. <laughs> Kate's book, Chow Bella, is out now. Here's Langbrook. Oh, Lady Lang, oh, what a Return of the Queen. Like. Return Whoa, of the Queen. Can you, out of exile... Is this the first time you've been into this studio yes, since you it's left? it's the first time. Well, and you left in disgrace. Yeah, <laughs> and we left in disgrace. You were frog oh, marched yeah. out Yeah, of that's here. right. There was security handed me my box. What has changed? Hello. What's wrong with you? <laughs> what has God. changed? Absolutely nada. Except, mm. no, I tell a lie, in reception, yeah. they've lowered... They've lowered the reception desk. Oh, yeah. They used to have that classic setup with the receptionist, so you couldn't yeah. see the receptionist. Oh, yeah. Oh, like st- that. That, that time when it was supposed to be better to stand to work. I think so. Yeah, it must yeah. have been. Right. But Swanee and I have hugged. We have hugged so many times just outside this door. Mm. Because I was working at, so at, uh, the, at the equivalent was... of Smooth at the time. Mm. Oh, so yes. we saw each other every yes. morning. Yeah. The radio station that dare not speak its name. It was a Great thrill. Yeah. Which one's that? Oh, Vega. Yeah, yeah Vega. Don't yeah. Neil sounded a bit flat that you were the first one to speak. Oh, he would have been. You know what he's like. What, <laughs> hey, what was know. he like to work with? Because well, he comes he, in on a Friday. When Sam's not here on a Friday, Dave comes in. And yes. Well, well you mean when Sam's jokes. not here on a Friday, a Monday, a Wednesday, yeah, occasionally. Yeah, that's right. Why yeah, are you telling me? Stay days. down, Pang. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just talking truth. It's a truth bomb. Hey, Got a sound effect answer. for that, Dino? Oh, I'll find one. Hey, real quick. Yeah. When, when Dave O'Neill broke his leg, tell us all about that. Oh, my goodness. Well, I wasn't there because it was at the other radio. Oh, Were shit. you there yeah. for that, Swanee? My bad. Forget the question. I wasn't there either. I'd been fired. See, so was oh, here. was it just him and Dicko? <laughs> yeah, it was just him Ooh. and Dicko. Imagine you've he did broken it on your purpose leg then. <laughs> 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 Just to get a couple of weeks off. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Touchdown. Ciao, <laughs> Ciao, Bella. We've got to talk about this beautiful book. Oh, my darling. Yeah, you've been hustling it for a couple of months now. Well, you, you know what happened? Well, I have been, actually. Because I wrote a book about our two years in Italy, mm. right? Mm. And it came out just before Christmas. But just before Christmas, it was... It was a shison show. I was supposed to come on this show. Yeah. You got, I got COVID. Then you I got, got COVID. COVID. Yeah. Have you had COVID? Yeah, yes. it, was, yeah it was my fault. I was the first oh, one to start. That's right. You were at the COVID party yes. with your wife. The key well, party. It's funny that because we. The, the, <laughs> it was, yeah, in the bowl. So really? few, uh, I, I'm not sure whether it was that or a mate's 40th a couple of days later, but uh, there was quite a few people got it from that mm. venue. Yeah, right. But I, was in the, I was in the Herald Sun yeah. while I was in the lineup. Yeah. Of the testing, you know, you go and get the uh, oh, what's it called the PCR. Yeah. Oh yeah, before you entered, did you? Before I entered, I was, I was going through. I was going through the Herald Sun website, yeah. and there it said my name, and I tested positive for COVID, and I hadn't even had the test yet. Oh what? Well, because I played golf with Sam. Oh uh, yeah, whatever. I've lost yeah, it. I, I know, I've lost it. <laughs> and I took, I took, I took a rat, I took a rat test, and I rang Sam. Yeah, well, yeah, great. I rang Sam. I said, great. Mate, I think you know what? We, Put this in the podcast. Have... No, this Put is the podcast. Stuff. Let's we talk will. about He's your book, shall me. we? <laughs> um, it is called Ciao Bella. It is magnificent. You. Took your family over to Italy for two years. It was only supposed to be yes, one, but then the world to be changed. One. Yes. How many people have you inspired to do this? Because to me, it sounds like fresh hell. Oh, does it? Yeah. Yeah. I would really? like. Yeah. I would like nothing less than that. Swanee, it was the greatest thing that we have mm. ever done. Sell it, and we've done some good stuff. Yeah. Well, you can read the book. Yes. Well, yeah. I dropped the book People, off to you when yes, you had Yes, I know, COVID. I know. And chicken soup. But not everybody has. No, correct. Well, I don't know why we, why we, we, I don't even know, and I, I talk about that in the book, I don't know why we had the idea to mm. do it. Yeah. But it wasn't like, you know, ding. Mm. It was just something that we kind of discovered we were on the same page And sometimes, about. don't you find that sometimes ideas like that, brave and crazy ideas, once they're in your head, there's almost a sense of, oh, no, now we have to do this. Well, also because you couldn't shake it. Yes. Once you'd had the idea, yeah. 
It was, and Peter kept saying to me, you're not going to give up work. There's no way you'll stop working. And not in kind of a passive aggressive way, probably mm. in a we can use the money way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was like, I will. Yeah. I just know that I will. And telling Husey was just, that Ooh, was really like, hard. Yeah. That was harder than telling my parents that we of were course. going away. But you didn't stop work though because I Husey did talked you out. Months. Yeah, he did. How long yeah, before? How long were you there before you went into lockdown? Before the world changed? A year. So you had a so year. So we'd though. already stay. Decided to stay. We decided to stay for the second year. To stay for another year, like in March of the first year. Peter and I were. I'm going to speak foreign. Walking across the piazza. <laughs> 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 And I said to Peter, I'm not going to be ready to go home at the end of the year. And he said, neither will I. Right. And then this is unheard of to you married blokes. We kissed. Oh. What? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Public yeah. show of in Italy. Of affection. Jeez. Oh, yeah. In Italy, you can totally do it. <laughs> and then so we, did, but we kept it from the kids for a while. Mm. The kiss. No. <laughs> <laughs> the um when we broke the news to them it was it was really terrible. Oh, was it they, oh, they, they wanted to come back? Well, they didn't want to be there for one year, let alone two. Well, Is that especially right? Lewis, our eldest, who by the time we left, so people who were thinking of doing this, mm. you know, like I was saying to to Carrie. Yeah, so Carrie's gone to England yeah. for a few months and yeah. I definitely I love the way you say that you. as though people don't know that. You're Not everybody does know. It's the one thing I've learned really? in this business. Yeah, yeah, actually that's the true. The minute you assume someone knows something, they don't. Oh my God, I've signed so many books as you. <laughs> that is actually <laughs> spot on. There you go. So many what? people think yeah. I'm Chrissy. Why yeah. did you right? feel the need to uh, put a photo of Sam Pang in your book? You're at Lawrence Mooney's wedding. Sales. Yes. Uh, and, sales is uh, yeah. Sales. Yes. <laughs> like, He's got you, such you you could not get a more wankerish photo. Of show Sam. me, show me. Have a look at it. Oh my God! Just like, enjoying what a, myself. What a tosser! Yeah, that's like myself. sugar daddies. He that's does. how he looks on holidays. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm relaxed. glad I don't go on holidays with you. This is work. <laughs> this is work, me. So we and we had some time in Italy. Today. Yeah, it was we wonderful. did. So we the moon's had... looks cool. Limo, right. not so much. She gold rocks that. Once hat. again, I'm going to say, put it the in podcast. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hayden looks terrible. Have you seen? Have you seen um, or been on the show when Chrissy's been hosting the? No, project because at... I do it Tuesday night. Mm. What you do it Tuesday? And night? I'm four, I'm a fourth. Oh, you don't. Right, yeah, you but to... Swanee's in the hot seat. She's a big dog now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you top. think she handled the hot seat? Because uh, have you got it, Dino? Absolutely. You know, I like, heard the pivot. Can we play yeah. it again? Yeah, please. House. I'm going to be the world's oldest housemate. I'm going to be like 95 years old, living in a share house in Brunswick, running after some 30 year olds who ate my hummus. I can't <laughs> wait. What's his name? <laughs> Russia is once again <laughs> being accused of war crimes after it's hundreds of bo- war crimes too. Really hard Terrible. because it's the pivots. Well, the pivots are like Dancing with the Stars. Mm. <laughs> yes. Which you have done? I have done. It's my only reality show. Hey, we're going to get to ads, but you're not going anywhere. Don't move. Kate Langbrook's here. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Kate Langbrook's here the for Queen. the first time. Uh, the Queen has returned. She was in the, the studio for returned. 12 years. How's it feel? How's it feel? Mm, it's better than off with her head. What is this match? I don't worry, I heard from a listener about it. We we're four years into our show, and uh, I said, who do you work for? I said, yeah, I work on the Nova Brecky show. <laughs> Someone said, yeah, I love Kate Langbrook. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people have got really no idea, like no you idea. were saying before. Mate, I still Absolutely. get mail for Husey. Yeah. yeah, don't you? What does it say? Is it, is it great mail? What does it say? What do yes, they say, the letters? Very complimentary. <laughs> hey, I've got some questions, all right? I've got some very, I've got some questions that just, you know, punchy, okay. punchy. Right. Yep. So as yep. we all know, you did this show for 12 years, right? Mm. Yeah. So when I, and it was, uh, but I remember listening, it was Husey, Kate and Dave, right? Yeah, that's how it started. Yeah. Mm. So why'd you get rid of Dave O'Neill? Well, because they took him to go to to the Smooth. new radio station. But you, but you were in started. a position of power where you could have kept him if you wanted to. So why did you leave him? Why did you let him leave? I, I can only assume he wanted to go. Did you dog him? 
What does that mean? Did you? <laughs> very, I may well have, Strange but I don't know what it means. Did you and Husey like squeeze out? Yeah, why Dave? did you get rid of our boys? No, he funny went me- to Vega to be, because he wanted to be. You know what? Because they're two leading men, oh, yeah. there's always a frisson <laughs> no, between them. And Dave wanted to be the star of the show, so yeah. he went to Vega to be the star of the show. How'd that work out? <laughs> and I had the greatest two years <laughs> ever. I had the greatest yeah. two years Is ever. Yeah, smooth? he's delightful. Is that smooth? Smooth. Now I think yeah. it was something in between. I want to say oh, classic yeah. rock. I classic think rock. you're right. Yeah, yeah, it was classic rock. I all think right. you're right. All right, hey, listen, yeah. I'm punchy. This is not the three pm pickup. All right, okay. we got to. Hang on, I'm cutting up some cake. Oh, I made. Oh, excuse me. You've obviously you've just shown your petticoat there. You've obviously never listened to the three pm pickup because there is no punchier show. It than is the three a, it pm is a, a, it We is are. Punchy. You're right. It is. Well, because really you know, punchy. I was the first person on the three yes. pm pickup. Yes. So I know exactly how it works. It was yes. it was a joy. It's as loose as a goose. Loose as a goose. Yeah, yeah, loose, yeah. loose, but that is loose. Yeah. And we have the best time. I'm sure you do when you get to phone it in every day. Do you know what I mean? Not actually putting any You know what? In at all. Do you know what? I let me just say this. As <laughs> don't, I say get up, don't get mad at no, me. No, no, I'm not mad. Don't let him distract you when from you cutting point that cake up. When you finger at yourself, there's three fingers pointing back at you. <laughs> What she's yeah. saying there, Sam, is that Did you, you phone, phone it in. in. <laughs> Just in case you missed it. I, I had missed it. <laughs> now, earlier this morning, my phone went off and I, I was waiting for you guys to say, oh, the rules are if, a, if your phone goes off and you get a text from someone, Guy you've got to read beer? it out. Well, you've got to read, read it out it on out. air. Yeah, I know. Oh, absolutely. But it was from you and it was a video of you baking. Yeah, um, I got up first thing in the morning. And she was baking. Kate Langbrook, magnificent. Yeah, you and you got any good Swanee in the kitchen? and I talk. Would you do the do food chef? talk? No. Don't no. cut your finger off. Yeah, no. careful your thumb. I'm left handed. It disturbs people. You've I'm made a you've it's made okay. a wonderful cake with sort of br- toasted s- almonds, almonds on flake. You know what it is? It's a, let's see if we can flaked see my. They are. Holding that, you're see. holding that knife like Major Gary Swan used to in the war. It's a really inappropriate. <laughs> the killing machine. <laughs> I'm seeing if I've got. Some Did you hear that apple? segment? And apart from I them did. inferring that somehow I'm related to Major Major Gary Robert Smith. Um, <laughs> Who said that? Well, that you is think? what you're inferring. Oh, right, right. Weren't oh, they? Weren't, weren't, that weren't they sweet? Are you joking? They're well, We were oh, not. Right. Weren't they sweet messages from they my dear? They were beautiful. Dad. I know, it's beautiful. Mm, All it. right, so I've just been handed a piece of apple cake. I've been wanting to try this cake. This is I was going to make oh, it for you last week. Get year. into it, Swanee. I grabbed Watching a knife. It. I grabbed a knife and plates, but I didn't grab anything to eat it with. Something while you're tasting it, while you're tasting it, while you're while you're tasting and serving it, don't you? Husey and Kate's punching above his weight winners. What was that? What was punching above his weight? As Can't part of the promo- as part of the promotion, did- Bryn Edelston rode a tram oh for the first God. time. Oh, what? I don't think it's any good. Kate, yeah, get it in here. Dino, Dino do you want some? some? I want a double You're slice. Just a side show, oh, here, there's a big fat one here. How did you do that? Oh no, don't tell us. I tell, oh, tell me. No, you know there. what it is. It's Mary Berry. What's that? You know that she's. Um, like I you. think. Uh, what's that cooking show in England? <laughs> The, the great, that they do great, here. Bake Off, Bake Off. Oh, yeah, Bake Off. Yeah, Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> How do you get those sliced <laughs> apples in the middle? Are they, do they go in just, raw or cooked? Yeah, they go in raw. Oh, wow. my God. And then you put the batter on. It's so good, isn't it? <gasps> and because I'm Dutch, I like an apple cake. No food. I'm yeah. not Dutch. <laughs> I could also say because I'm Dutch, I like a, a shoe carved out of wood. But yet not. <laughs> no, it's good. And a oh tall my, man. Leave it for the tall podcast. Man, the tallest people. <laughs> <laughs> the tallest people in the world, the Dutch. Well, yeah, this, is, this oh. is just a dream come true. We've never been in the same studio oh, together, and I it's love just it. like the most What's, natural, that's wonderful. That's true. I've never, you've never had us on your. I've never been on your radio show mm. and all that. We years. invite you on the three pm pick up all the time. I it's an mm. open invitation. Actually, I don't that's get that. Liar, have been in here. I don't get you. that invite. That doesn't make it to me. It doesn't get to me. Mm. I, I'd love to come. Your in. people must run what, interference. What, what's the most Shots. memorable or the craziest thing? You did when you're on this show. Mm. Twelve years. Can you remember doing any wacky stunts? What do you remember? Um, I remember our last show more than anything because we did it in a theatre. Athenaeum. Mm, really? At the Ath. Yeah. Did you? And we uh, had like I don't know, 
nine hundred people there. You were, it was geez. fantastic. You I were lowered from the ceiling. Yeah, I was lowered. <laughs> like pink. In the what? finale. <laughs> in the finale. Oh, I you got, were dressed in something amazing. Uh, we'd done, we'd sung a song. For some reason, we'd <laughs> sung "Tie a Yellow Ribbon Around the Old Oak Tree," and all our That's kids right. came on stage. And that, for some reason, they were wearing lederhosen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You are done. And then at the end, I got pulled up onto the into the rafters yes. with a harness on and a trap door opened and Husey went down to hell and when he as the trap door opened and the red flames consumed him I said say hi to Matt and Joe for me <laughs> <laughs> Because that's how it was in those days. It was great. That's cool. Oh, shit. <laughs> it was great. But I don't think we were that mad. We were just like, well, I remember you guys. Listening to we that just show. loved, I loved it. it. We had um, fun. We love you. It's so. It's such a thrill to see you. It, the the book has obviously book. gone gangbusters, and there's Ciao, not, Bella. not too many Reprint, people. Reprint second edition. I think so. Oh, I think so. But that just means they printed eight the first time. <laughs> <laughs> just take the photo out of Sam, will you? Mate, I know that no it's... image clearance, by the way. <laughs> Didn't even ask me. I know that it sounds tacky and whatever, but Mother's Day is coming up, and if you're desperate, uh, you, if you if you're like, oh God, I don't know what to get. I love that. If you're desperate, if you're desperate. If you're... Desperate, well, I thought, well, and you know where that comes from? Ten pairs of slippers. That comes from like, God, what do you get your mum? What do you get your mum? What do you get your mum? This is a great, great idea. She will laugh, she will cry, she will be inspired. She feel a great deal of regret that she never travelled to Italy with her family. <laughs> I don't, she, I don't, she may not feel regret about. That. Are you happy? Are you happy you came in this morning? I'm so happy. I've loved it. Please don't go just yet. I love you all. Love Individually you. and Kate collectively. That doesn't always happen. Have some more. I oh, will be. Don't Kate worry about that. Kate is amazing. Mm. Kate Langbrook, we love you. Love you. Well, Chrissy, Sam and Brown, every show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brown, oh, unless it's a weekend. Here is a 100.